Welcome back to the Explanation Pro. Today I'll recap a drama family film called, Hachi, A Dog's Tale. Spoilers incoming. The movie begins at a classroom where students are giving their speeches about their personal heroes. The teacher calls for Rani as the next presenter. He writers on the chalkboard, Hachiko, and explains that he was his grandfather's dog. Some of his classmates laugh. He talks about how Hachi, the nickname of the dog, was considered a mystery dog since no one really knew where he came from. They think he may have escaped from a dog pound or from somebody else's car. Either way, Hachi was lost. We see a dog travel from a Japanese monastery to the United States. He rode on a pickup truck, a train, and a plane but lost his tag and was never claimed. While being escorted by a train personnel on a cart, his wooden cage fell and the dog escapes without detection. He roams the train and coincidentally stops in front of Parker, Ronnie's grandfather. Parker asks him if he was lost before picking him up. He tries to surrender the dog over to Carl but the man refuses. He tells Parker to take him instead and in case anyone shows up looking for him, he'll tell them that Parker has him. He insists on handing the dog over and Carl explains that the best he can do is lock the dog inside a closet for the night if no one claims him. And if the next morning, they still have no luck, the dog will be sent to the pound. This catches Parker's attention and he decides to take the dog home. He gets home late and sees a bottle of champagne chilling by the entry. He leaves Hachi on the living room sofa and tells him to stay. Kate, his wife, greets him, hugging and kissing him hello. She leads him back upstairs and tells him that she has a surprise for him. He says he has his own too. Hachi gets off the sofa and heads for a piano. He steps on the pedal which makes a loud noise that the couple hears. Parker tells Kate that it's a branch against the window. Hachi then heads for the living room door and jumps on it until it opens. He escapes and immediately heads up the stairs and into the couple's bedroom. He finds the two in bed and goes to lick at Kate's feet which freaks her out so much that she screams. While on their way down the stairs, Kate reminds Parker that they have an agreement. He explains that he remembers but the dog was at the train station lost and Carl told him he'll be surrendered to the pound so he brought him home. She thinks that Parker brought him home to convince her to keep him but he denies this and promises to find his owner. For the night, Parker takes the dog out on their shed. He brings him Luke's stuff to keep warm as well as a bowl of water. He leaves him and locks the door. The dog watches as Parker gets back inside, whines a little while scratching at the wooden wall. The next morning, Andy, the couple's daughter, holds the dog close as Kate takes a photo of them. Andy tells Parker that she loves the dog and asks if he has a name already. Kate answers that it's temporary guest. She tries to convince Parker to keep the dog since the house feels so empty since Luke's been gone. He tells her to ask her mother and Andy calls for her. Parker states out loud that the dog is a wonder dog and he has to keep him. Kate disagrees and tells Andy not to encourage him. He heads to Mary Ann, a bookstore owner, to asks her for a favor. He shows her the dog and she immediately exclaims in delight. He shows her the lost dog poster he has and asks if he can post it on her window to which she easily agrees to. Mary Ann tells him that the dog's fabulous and he asks if she's interested. She looks over at Antonia, her cat, and asks her if she'd like a new roommate. The cat hisses then takes a swipe at the dog who immediately whimpers. Mary Ann quickly pulls the dog back and scold Antonia. He runs into Jazjeet, the hot dog cart vendor, next to buy a coffee. He asks him if he's interested in a dog and Jazjeet jokingly tells him that he prefers cash. Parker tells him that the dog will be a great guard dog for him and Jazjeet exclaims he doesn't think it'll be great to get a guard dog to guard hot dogs. At work, Parker shows Ken, a Japanese's professor and colleague, the tag left on the dog's crate. He tells him that, Yamanashi, is all he can read from it and it's a part of central Japan. He mentions that it's no ordinary dog. It's a very special breed called, Akita. Ken notices the tag on the dog's collar and tells Parker that Hachi's written on it which is Japanese for the number 8 and coincidentally the number of good fortune. Parker comments that it's a good name. Ken further explains that the dog may have been born 8th in the litter and that there's a spiritual significance with the number since it reaches up to heaven then comes back down to earth. Parker tells Kate that he has already put up 10 flyers and he believes that someone will claim Hachi. Kate asks him who Hachi was and he explains that he found out what the symbol in the dog's collar was. She's upset that she named him which he denies. She accuses him of wanting to keep the dog which he also denies. 
While they're arguing, Parker realizes that Hachi has disappeared. They find him in the living room, destroying Kate's work. A call comes in for Hachi. It's not the owner but seems to be interested in adopting him. Kate asks them to stay on the line as she searches for a pen but hears Parker and Andy playing with the dog outside. She looks out the window before telling the caller that the dog's already taken. We find a grown Hachi digging a hole under the fence. He escapes and follow Parker to the train station. As Parker boards the train, he finds Hachi outside. He disembarks and tries to order him home. Hachi goes but once his back is turned, the dog follows him again. Unable to stall the train further, Parker tells Carl to let the train go and they'll walk home. From the shed, Hachi hears the train whistle which means Parker's back. He jumps the fence now in his excitement and heads for the train station. Hachi patiently waits for Parker by the entrance of the train station. He heads for Parker as soon as he sees him. After a homemade lunch with Andy and Michael, her boyfriend, Parker asks Ken the reason why Hachi refuses to fetch. His friend points discloses that Akitas are not the kind of breed who wants to please people but rather they train because they have a special connection with their humans. Ken tells him that they can't be bought and that they're Japanese not American. Parker promises that he'll find a reason. Parker lets Hachi accompany him to the train station one day. When they get to the train station, he instructs Hachi to go straight home which he does. As the train arrives, Parker finds Hachi waiting for him patiently outside the train station. The dog immediately heads for him to greet him. Hachi starts accompanying Parker to and from the train station which becomes their routine each day. Andy visits her parents to announce that she's pregnant. Kate cheers and hugs her. Andy runs outside to let Parker know as well. One winter morning, Parker calls for Hachi to follow him but the dog starts barking at him angrily. He asks him what's wrong and approaches him but Hachi steps back and barks again. He tries to call for him again and Hachi finally comes forward to get his scratches. He asks him what's wrong and tells him he's alright. He starts walking out but Hachi doesn't follow. Kate asks him what's wrong with him but he tells her that he doesn't know. Hachi refuses to go with Parker and he leaves without him. Hachi goes in the shed to get his ball before running after Parker. He catches up to Parker as the man pulls open the door to the train station. Parker goes to hug him and Hachi finally fetches for him. They play for a while, he tells Carl that it's the first time Hachi fetches. Hachi tries to get Parker to play again but he has to leave so he brings the ball with him. He tells Hachi to go home but the dog starts barking angrily at him again as he's about to enter the train station. He hugs him one last time and tells him that he'll see him at 5 pm. During his class, Parker doesn't feel well. When he goes to walk, he passes out which alarms his whole class. At 5 pm, Hachi's waiting at the train station and is greeted by other commuters but no Parker. That evening, Michael goes to pick him up. He puts a collar on Hachi and brings him home. Andy visits Hachi the next morning in the shed and goes to pet him. She's wearing all black clothes. Michael calls for her and tells her that it's time to go. The whole family minus Parker leaves in a car. We find out that they're burying Parker that day. At exactly 5 pm, Hachi goes to the train station to wait for Parker's arrival not knowing that his friend's never coming home again. Kate sells the house. Andy and Michael takes Hachi with them. In the new house, Hachi escapes when Michael gets home and doesn't close the door immediately. He chases after him. Hachi follows the train track back to Bedridge. He immediately heads for the house and his shed but a new family's moving in. They greet him but Hachi is confused and leaves. He goes back to the train station instead. Mary Ann and Jazjeet greets him when they see him and watches as he sits on his spot to wait for Parker's arrival. Andy and Michael arrive at the train station and finds Hachi. They bring him back home. Back home, she finally realizes that Hachi's still waiting for Parker's return. She tells her that they love him and wants him to stay but tells him that if he has to go then it's okay too. She opens the gate, Hachi licks her hand then leaves. He goes back to his spot and waits patiently. Like routine, Hachi will arrive at the train station at 5 pm and wait until 9 pm before leaving to sleep by the train tracks. The community, most of whom are friends with Parker, takes care of him by feeding him. Teddy, a reporter, approaches Carl to ask about Hachi since it sounds like he'd make a good story. He takes a photo of Carl and Hachi and publishes the story on the Woonsocket call paper. People start sending cards and money to the train station for Hachi. Carl shows him the card and the money and tells him that if it keeps up, 
he'll have to open a bank account for him. He also shows Jazjeet the stuff. Ken arrives at Bedridge Station to visit Hachi. Jazjeet approaches them with water and food for Hachi. They introduce themselves to each other. Ken attempts to give a donation for Hachi but Jazjeet refuses. He tells him that if needed, they'll make a collection for Hachi from the travelers, the vendors and they'll take care of it. Ken speaks Japanese to Hachi and tells him that it's been a year and he understands what he's feeling as he misses Parker too. He tells Hachi that Parker's never coming home but agrees that if Hachi wants to wait then Hachi must wait. For Parker's 10th death anniversary, Kate comes back to Bedridge. She visits Parker's grave and runs into Ken. They go back to the train station and find an elderly Hachi, walking up to his spot to wait for Parker. She runs up to Hachi in disbelief and goes to sit next to him, commenting that he's still waiting. She asks if it's alright to wait with him for the next train. During Christmas, Kate tells Ronnie the story about Hachi and Parker, showing him the photo album she has of the two of them. That same night, while hiding below a train, Hachi lifts his head up and walks down the train tracks again. He goes back to his usual spot to wait. He falls asleep and starts reminiscing memories with Parker. He wakes up when he notices Parker standing by the door of the train station. He lifts his head up as Parker calls for him and immediately run towards him in excitement. A bright flash of the train pops up and we find a motionless Hachi on his usual spot. We're back to the present with Ronnie ending his story and stating why Hachi will be his forever hero. The whole class claps. The movie ends with Ronnie and a tiny Akita puppy walking down the train tracks. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.